Okay, we're doing partial fraction expansion or PFE, and I have a step-by-step -step method of doing it. Not everybody teaches it with the same steps. And we were up to my step three, which was determine the numerators. And the, the slow but sure way was to, oops, uh, was to um, equate numerators. And I did an example of that in the previous recording. Now I'm going to talk about the cover-up method. It works, well, it certainly works for distinct real roots. I'll tell you where it works. Here are distinct real roots. See these constants? They're, they're distinct. They're not repeated. They're not raised to powers. It can find the A, B, and C. The cover-up method will work finding those A, Bs, and C. On these quadratic terms with complex roots, it, it doesn't help at all in finding, in this case, this B and this C. It doesn't help at all. When you have repeated real roots, like in this example here, this guy's repeated, it can help you find the B, or the coefficient corresponding to the highest power of that term, but not the A. So in this case, it could find this B, this C, because this guy's distinct, can't find the A. So you're still stuck with uh, equating numerators to find that A. Um, and by the way, why do we even do, why do we treat complex denominators like this? Why don't we just break it up into its complex number roots? Uh, because when, when we're doing all real coefficients, we can deal, we'll get all real results ultimately. We don't want to mess with intermediate complex number arithmetic. So we can handle these kind of uh, complex conjugate pair roots terms uh, special. Otherwise, we'd have to use Euler's formula, yada, yada. So here's the cover-up method. First, why does it work? Here's a case where you have two real roots, both distinct. You broke it up and it looks like this. What if I multiplied everything by S plus one and then evaluated it at what makes S plus one go to zero, which would be S equals minus one. So on the left, I'd have S plus two over S plus three. Multiplying by S plus one would get rid of that. That's why we call it cover up. You could cover up the S plus one. You're left with S plus two over S plus three. Evaluate it at minus one. S equals minus one. On the right, that gives us, on the right, what, what do we get? Multiply this guy by S plus one, you just get A. Multiply this guy by S plus one, and then evaluate it at S equals minus one, this whole term goes to zero, and you're just left with A. So to find this coefficient, A, that denominator, you cover up that denominator over here and evaluate it, S equals minus one, or where, where the term you're talking about, goes to zero. But let's do the whole thing. A is going to be S plus two over S plus three evaluated at S equals minus one. You had arithmetic, it's one half. B is going to be, here I'm going to cover up the S plus three term. I'll have S plus two over S plus one, and I'll evaluate it at minus three. You had arithmetic, I get minus one over minus two or a half, which is what we got the other way. Here's, here's another example. Given this, we factor it, we put it in the thumbs. So this was step one, this was step two. What is A? That, so let's look at this. Cover up the S minus four, and I have one over S plus five, and I'm gonna evaluate it at Four, four, one ninth. 
about the B. I'll cover up the S plus five, because that's the term over here for B, and evaluate it at minus five. Minus five minus four is minus nine. So now we have the two terms. We look up these parts of the table, and there we go. There's our inverse Laplace transform. If you do a lot of these problems, you'll find different ways to do them. Uh, but if, if you don't want to get slick at this, you just want the tried and true methods, I would say if all your roots are real and distinct, cover up methods. If any of them are repeated or you have complex roots, just use equate numerators. That's the pretty safe sure logic. Because if you can, you want to use the cover up method. You might think it's oh, some other damn thing you got to learn, but it makes things easier and quicker when it can be applied. You don't like to solve multiple equations and multiple unknowns. This, this is a very simple algorithmic approach. So finally, what do we do with those quadratic denominators? They're, they're almost always going to be non-repeated, at least in my course, uh, because the repeated ones tend not to be in tables. Uh, you, could, you could have run into trouble. Somebody could give you problems that would be kind of tough to do the partial fraction expansion for. But what we're using are these terms in the table. Here's the S part and the corresponding T time equation, time domain and the Laplace domain. You've seen these before, these E to the AT cosine and E to the AT sine star. We're trying to get things into terms that look like either this guy or this guy. Let's say you're given this. Confirm that this can't be factored into real roots. It has complex conjugate roots. Um, I do what I call complete the square. So you'll take half of this middle term, here's plus two, so you'll make it S plus one. You're gonna square that. When you square that, what's that gonna give us? S squared plus 2s, that matches that, plus one. We need to add another four to make it equal this guy. So just this part would be the s squared plus 2s plus one, another four gives us that equation. We can leave the numerator the same at that step, but what we need is any place there's an s up top, you really need an S plus one to match this S plus one in the denominator. So I'll say two S plus one, that will give me two S plus two. And I need to add another three to come up with the five. So I just split up the numerator. Now I can split the whole thing up. Bring the two out front, and then I have the S plus one over that denominator. That matches this format. A is minus one in this case, K is two. Now for here, I have a three in the numerator when I started. So I'll put that up top. What I want in the numerator here is the square root of whatever this guy is, A. So the K squared in the denominator and K in the numerator. So I want the numerator to be the square root of this guy. If I multiply and divide by the same guy, and I'll put that division up front. So this thing is in the table. So I look up the two things in the table, and there's my inverse Laplace transform. So get used to doing this. Uh, don't just watch me do it once and think you can do it. Do a few yourself before you, before you take an exam on this stuff. Yeah, this stuff is a little bit tedious. Sometimes you're solving multiple, multiple equations and multiple unknowns, or you're doing this sort of uh, complete the square, a little arithmetic, and you want to get everything right. Um, just practice all these techniques. 
before you did an exam on it. Uh, and that completes partial fraction expansion. Two recordings, get it over with, do some practice, and uh, got to practice it, just like long division in grade school. I assume they still teach that.